Hello there, and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crestorio 2. And after the rather short video yesterday, where I was talking about the, the end game puzzle, I'm now going to go on and talk about some things that are a little bit less spoilery. So let's get stuck in here and, uh, and see what else has been going on around the factory. And we're in a slightly weird position at the moment, because we're, we're working on the end game puzzle, as you know, and so we don't actually really need to do all that much more research or building or anything. We just need to, we need to finish the puzzle and then find out what that requires from us. And once we've done that, we're also then going to try and pick up the, the couple of end game researches, like the, uh, the this transceiver thing here, which is a Crastorio 2 thing, which we don't really understand, but I'm hoping won't be too difficult. And then also go on to do the spaceship victory as well, because yeah, we, I feel like we might as well, because, you know, it's there. However, as you can see, these aren't going to take an enormous amount of effort. Look, doing the spaceship victory is only 5,000 research packs and building a spaceship, neither of which is enormously resource intensive, especially when you compare it to some of the bigger research we've been doing, like this factory spaceship 6, which is 16,000, or the mining productivity, which is now up to 40,000 for the next one. And so it feels like we're, we're putting a certain amount of effort into trying to keep the factory running nicely and keep everything flowing, and yet is it really worth it? Is there any point? And I think the answer is, it's not absolutely vital for our primary goal, which is to finish the uh, the Stargate puzzle, and also to finish all of the non-infinite or non-semi-infinite researches. However, it would be rather nice to have a factory that's fully working, fully operational, where everything flows nicely through it, um, and where, where we can put in big research projects and they'll just work. And so I think it's, whilst it's not absolutely vital for our for our primary goal, I think still working on these things is quite nice, and so we're going to carry on doing a certain amount of it, and maybe even a little bit of work after we've technically finished the game. And so, let's start off by taking a look at the research and what's been holding things up over here, because as you can see, Factory Spaceship 6, it, it, it's ticking over, but it's not actually running at the moment. And we've had two different types of problems over here, however, they do have a common cause, which we'll get to in a moment. And one of them is that sometimes we run out of Energy Science 4. At the moment, at the moment, it's absolutely fine. We've got to go, it's backed up all the way up to here. There are no problems there at all. But we have had some problems during the last stream. We've also had, we've also currently got problems with advanced science too. And if we trace this back, then we can go up here, all the way, all the way along the belt, back up along here, along through, through here, to the machines that are supposed to be making them. Actually, these are the ones that are making advanced science too. And although we see, also seem to be a little bit low on advanced science one, and if we look in here, we can see yes, the advanced science two has stopped because we've run out of advanced science one. If we follow that further back, then we can see down here we've we've run out because we've run out of advanced catalogs. Up here we've run out of advanced catalogs because we've run out of com quantum computation data. And you might be able to guess where this is going. There's no comp quantum computation data in the uh, station over here, and if we go over to where that's being made, we can see that there's no quantum computation data being made because we've run out of, gosh, it's the quantum processors again. Yes, we're still we're still very, very short of those. Those are still, they're, they're, there have been an ongoing problem for at least a month now. And if we take a look over here, well, we are, we're trying to make them, what are we short of this time? Every time I look over here, there's a different problem with the, with the construction of the quantum computers. And at the moment, it's the Holmium cables, uh, which has actually been the problem uh, most times I've looked recently, which in, this is because it's really, really greedy. It takes 32 Holmium cables to make one quantum processor, and that's that's rather a lot. So I do rather wonder if maybe we should be making the Holmium cables on site over here, and maybe that would be a suitable expansion for the future. But in the meantime, I've been doing little bits here and there, and so last time, Oh, <laughs> there is a train jam. Right, okay. I was going to say, last time I bumped it up to having two trains delivering the Holmium cables, and um, yes, I have indeed done that, and that is what's broken it. Um, so the theory <laughs> around here is that we have one train will come up, and it'll go into, and each of the trains will go into this station here, the um, the Holmium cable wait station, and then in theory, we then get with the train then waits until this train, the other train has gone, and then it just whips around here and, un and can unload its Holmium cables, and then it can go back down to the ground to get some more. So so in theory, that should work really, really well. However, this station doesn't have a train limit set, and that's the problem. So we actually need to have a train limit of one set there, and possibly we need to do some, do some shenaniganry with the uh, with the signals over here. If I turn the signal on the out on the way out of this one into a chain signal, then this train won't be able to leave until this one has already left. To be honest, either one of those fixes probably should fix it. However, putting both of them in together is a sort of belt and braces thing to make sure it it's absolutely going to be fine. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, it is absolutely not fine. I'm going to need to send a person over here to get in this train and just reverse it back up a little bit. Oh, actually, I wonder, could I tell this train to go to here? Can I get it to go to here? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, so if we do that, actually, if we do more than that, if we tell that train to go back into here, then it'll it'll pull into the station over here. That'll get it past the, um, the red lights here, I think. 
then hopefully it's far and just far enough around the corner and there's another train coming through. So that's a start. At least we've cleared up this area. Yeah, there we go. Now this train can go, which means we should then be able to get the Holmium cable train to run back in here. And then we'll be able to start making the quantum cables again. So that's, that's one of the fixes I wanted to do. The other one, as I was saying, was to take a chain signal, one of these guys, and put it there instead. So we'll swap that one over. And that will then hopefully stop that problem from happening again. And well, either of those things should, should stop that problem from happening again. But, you know, as I say, having two fixes for a, for a simple problem like that just makes it feel a little bit safer. And so the theory is with these trains that we have, as you can see, we have two trains that are bringing up the Holmium cables. They go from the handover area down here where we have this crazy big train stacker. We can then bring the uh, trains in to drop off the quantum, ca the Holmium cables in here. I keep calling them quantum cables, that's not right. And they then get brought down, put into the station down here. A train can come in, grab them from here. And it looks like, oh, we've, we've just about filled this, uh, this warehouse up and that's rather nice. And then from there, they can bring them up to here. And because they stop here, in theory, we will get to a point where we have enough Holmium cables there and we'll have one train waiting here and one train waiting in the station and actively unloading. My concern with this and the slight risk factor is that we might end up with one train in the station here loading up and if there's a shortage of the Holmium cables then we could end up with a second train parked behind it trying to get in here and uh, that could cause issues. So it might be worth putting another little spur off to the side here for the Holmium train to wait in, sort of something like, like this basically. And, 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 do, and do the same sort of things I did up in, in, uh, in orbit. With, a, with an actual waiting space for the train to go out, go into over here and get it, just get out of the way. So I think that's probably worth adding in just in case because we don't want we don't want to have a train parked here and then another train parked here, which will block the sulphur pickup and probably block the rare metals as well. So we need yeah we need to be a little bit careful down here now. I've got two trains in running through this route. However, at the moment, we are churning through these uh, Holmium cables at a rate of knots. Um, as you see, the number in here is dropping off very, very quickly. I think we're going to run out again. However, we, we, we might be just refilling the belt at the moment. Uh, when, when it runs through, uh, although that said, given the rate we're using them up down here, I wouldn't be surprised if we just have an entire solid deep space belt flowing in here all the time when all of these machines are running. <laughs> so it's certainly happening at the moment, well, but then again, we're, we're filling up buffers in these machines. We, need, we can get good, 108 of them in there, apparently, before, it's, before it stops loading. So that's going to need to put 108 in each of them before the... Uh, be and, and then from then on, we'll then find out how fast it flows in, in normal use. The other concern with this is whether we're getting the Holmium cables being made rapidly enough to bring them all over here to keep this station happy. Now we did see that this one is completely was completely full and now it's filling up, well it's filling up again because the trains come through and there's been some more um, and we, we will call more trains to come over here whenever this warehouse is empty and I believe we call two trains whenever that happens or at least we try to We do um, if, if, if they're available. And those Holmium cables are being made over here in the um, intermediates area. So you can see down here we have two blue belts flowing through into this warehouse but that's not actually enough to keep up with the demand at the moment. So maybe some upgrades are going to be required over here and that's going to be maybe turning these into tier six speed modules and tier six productivity modules, uh, green belts coming out of here and going into here. Maybe uh, then the risk is whether the uh, Holmium supply can keep up. But at the moment we have plenty of Holmium. The, that, that one has been thoroughly fixed. So yeah, it, it's hard to say. It's hard to keep these things balanced. And, and, and But I've noticed that we, we did have a full warehouse down here a while back, but we've since transferred that warehouse from here across the factory over to over to here. Fill, I suppose filled this warehouse up. This one is mostly full, and that's just whether we can keep up with the with that uh, rate of demand. And um, I'm I'm not enormously confident because we, it is a lot of Holmium cables that we're getting through to make those quantum circuits. I guess we'll see how it goes. And so that is the, the current limitation on uh, keeping the uh, re research going. Uh, it'll be a little while before those filter through and, and we get to, we get this system kicking back in again. But um, yes, this is linked to why we had a shortage of the, uh, of the Energy 4, because those require quantum processes as well, as you can see coming in along here. The next thing I took a look at was the uh, significant data production down here, because as you may or may not remember, we had we had um, some shortages with this one, or at least it was a little bit it was a little bit iffy, a little bit on the edge. We weren't quite sure whether it was working as fast as we wanted it to, and the problem was that there were quite a lot of computers along here. However, we weren't able to take away the blank data cards that were being produced quickly enough, because this recipe we're producing 26 blank data cards for every 10 significant data we produce, and that's because we're taking in loads and loads of insights, each of which contains a large quantity of uh, of, of memory cards effectively and so we have to release those somehow and so they all just disappear off down a belt or at least that's the theory. Previously we were at a, we were at a point where we couldn't get rid of the, um, the the blank data cards quickly enough along here even down this um, this deep space belt because over here there were that we had normal space belts which were limiting the flow 
So the first thought was, well, we could just upgrade the belts around here and then they'll, they'll be thrown away a bit quicker. Uh, but we didn't really want to do that because quite a lot of these memory cards are needed elsewhere in the system for making for actually making the insights. So because we're using the very, very efficient methods of making the insights, where you take in the four catalogs, one of each type, and then you get 32 insights out, you also need to feed in a load of blank data cards. So we need to have a supply of blank data cards here. These cards are basically being made into the insights. The insights are coming in here and the cards are being passed back out again to be, go loop round and round and round forever. And so because we have an input as well in, in the form of the catalogues, that actually works quite well and the numbers are okay. However, we need to make sure that we don't throw away too many of them. And so I didn't want to just upgrade the belts down here uh, in order to, uh, because then quite a lot of them would end up going down the disposal chute off this way and disappearing. And we don't have a supply of uh, blank data cards being brought in here because in theory, the number coming out of these machines should be enough to keep everything running. So it was a little bit tricky, and I decided. I eventually decided, and this isn't that, that actually, this actually isn't that complicated a solution. But I decided the best way to do it would be to then start putting the data cards on both sides of the belt up here, and this means we've got twice room for twice as many of them coming through, and also it means half a deep space belt can go on to a full normal space belt, and the throughput rate is the same. And so this this worked out quite well. It's balanced nicely there. We've also got some coming down here to be made into the uh, the astro sciences or the Astro Insights rather. And so this, this whole system here, now I'm pretty confident this is going to be all right. And as you can see up here, we have a lot of blank data cards on the belts along here. And so we've ended up putting quite a lot of them into a sort of a limbo where they're just sat on the belts and it's a, it's a little bit wasteful to store this many of them. And I think that led on to another slight problem I had. However, it does mean we can be confident that we're not going to run out of them. And I think that's quite important. This having a huge number of da uh, blank data cards stored on the belt over here led to a bit of extra demand on from the uh, blank data card production system down here. As you can see, we now actually have a, a ooh, we're not we're actually not making them at the moment. So clearly, we've run out of something. It looks like we've run out of the um, the the substrates to make to make more memory cards, which is a little. Oh no, here here comes some more now. So it's just we we're, we're bringing them up from the ground at the rate we need, or at a decent rate. It's just that because we used a load of them up, we had a sudden surge of demand on them. Um, we 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 just need a few more. But anyway, yeah, so they're all being fed in over here, and if we look in here, well, there's not quite a train's worth in the, in the station, that's a shame. Um, but I came over here to, to check on this, because there weren't any in the Astro area, and it turned out that something a bit weird had happened. We had They were massively imbalanced. For some reason, there were a lot more data cards in this warehouse than there were in this one, and I'm really not sure why, because the whole system should be completely balanced. As you see, the, the memory cards come in from here, or from here, and then they're split perfectly evenly by this splitter here. There's, there's a priority in input on from the, from this side but the uh, the two both sides are, have no priority set on the output so we should have 50% of them going either way over here now there's a slightly shorter belt on this on this side than there is on this side but i mean surely that shouldn't make much of a difference and if it, if it did i would expect it to make a difference the other way around we'd end up with more in here potentially um, and so maybe there's been the train's been coming in maybe one of the unloading places there's been a some sort of system works a thing where it's been unloading more from one side than the other i don't know it's it's, it's all very weird because it shouldn't have got out of balance like this because the train should always come in here pick up a full load which is balanced between the two warehouses and then take it off and dump that entire load somewhere else so i'm not quite sure what happened here However, to make sure it doesn't happen again, I've put this inserter in between the two, and this is hooked up to uh, some these green cables, and we're watching but the inventories of both of the warehouses. And this warehouse, we're, get, we're feeding the number into here, and we're saying, I want to output the number of card, blank data cards as C, because for card, because it's something different. And then here, we're, um, oh, we're, not, we're actually not using that one. <laughs> and then down here, we're saying, if blank data cards is greater than C, then feed them through. Now, in theory, what I should be doing is have is have another one pointing in the other direction, and then do some cunning maths up here. Like this, this one here should subtract, I don't know, a hundred from C or something like that, and then feed it through down to this one, and then we'll run we'll run this one in the opposite direction if there's if there's an imbalance the other way. I haven't done that yet um, because it hasn't been necessary at the moment. We have actually at the moment we do have a slight imbalance, so maybe maybe I should set this up, and that could be something I'll do in the next stream, I guess. It shouldn't be necessary to have this sort of balancing system going on. However, occasionally you see things get a little bit out of uh, out of whack, and you need to you need to tweak it a little bit. Originally, the warehouses here were, were uh, right next to each other, like these ones are. Um, but fortunately, we have the uh, the dolly pickers mod installed, so you can you can move things around a little bit even after they've been placed without having to uh, having to worry about the the massive quantity of inventory in them. So that, that was uh, very very useful. Without that, I'd have struggled quite a lot more to get these uh, these in the middle. I'd have had to I don't I don't even know exactly what I'd have done. Maybe pull a tra maybe stop stop filling it up, pull trains in to empty it into the trains. I don't know. It would have been it would have been awkward though. So I'm glad. I didn't have to. I also had a bit of a look at the Astro Sciences. You may remember last week I was talking about how it was limited by the rate we could get the uh, coolant in over here.
here. And so I and so I improved that by shoving in a load of extra pumps along along here to push the coolant through a bit quicker. Uh, and that seemed to help. And so I just wanted to keep an eye on it to make sure it wasn't going to need a proper fix doing to it because that was a I will happily admit that was a bit of a clutch, a bit of a botch job to try and just try and get the system working again. Uh, but no, now with the lack of science we're doing at the moment, and because we're not doing the uh, long range star mapping, which as we've discussed before, completely hammers the astro science, things now seem to be absolutely fine. You can see over here, everything has stopped and we're just waiting for sciences to kick back in again. We've got some nice big buffers. I think everything is fine over here. The next thing to look at is going to be the Naquium. So in previous episodes, I've mentioned that it doesn't seem to be being chucked through this um, archer chest over here fast enough to keep up with the uh, with the demand at the other end. Um, and so Mike has been doing a little bit of expansion over here. He's uh, found some more patches that he can play with um, over here. So you go here, 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 here. There's a decent amount of Naquitite over here. So he's going to be pulling all of that into this station over here and then feeding it into the various trains. And it's going, essentially, it's going to be another copy of this station. We're going to be picking up large quantities of, um, of, of Naquitite to bring it over to here where it can be then chucked through the Arco chest over to Talos to be uh, processed. And so, yes, as I say, he found the, found the patches, he marked them, he's extended the, extended the rail network over to allow him to pick those up. He then had a bit of an existential crisis and realised there's not really much point in doing this because, as I was saying in the beginning of the episode, we're, we're kind of approaching a point of being finished now. However, as I say, it is it would be quite nice to have a system here that's set up and stable and we have confidence that it will just keep running. So, you know, it's not completely wasted and we may we may sort of run the factory for a bit longer, let the science ch uh, tick through and just see if we can go a bit, a bit further than the, uh, than the basic finish we were talking about. It would be quite nice to go in and, and do all of the semi-infinite researches. So that's ones like the uh, the mining productivity 14, for example, where it is just mining productivity after min mining productivity, but we haven't technically got to the point where there's that magic infinity sign on the uh, on the end of the thing yet. So doing a few more of these would be quite nice, but that's we're looking at 40,000, another 44,000, 49,000, 54,000. That's a lot of science packs and a lot of the deep space ones, uh, deep space ones as well, which is what we're trying to get the Naquitite for. However, as you probably noticed as I started talking, over here in the uh, in the Arco Hub, you will see that uh, the system has stopped flowing, despite me saying that it wasn't fast enough. And that will be because it stopped running at the other end over on Talos because, well, the uh, the the crush has stopped flowing because the uh, the Naquitite system has stopped flowing completely. Uh, because we've presumed, yes, because we've got enough of it. You can see the red light on there and on there saying these belts have been turned off. We're not loading stuff into this warehouse. We're not loading stuff into the train. The train has gone. We, we've got enough Naquium, apparently, which is a bizarre position to be in, given what Naquium has been like for so, for, so, for so long through this game. However, in order to get this to this point with the point of actually working nicely, I did have to make a couple of tweaks. Uh, one of which was to deal with all of the water that was accumulating in the system down here. These pipes were too full. Uh, that's not water, that's cryonite slush. In these pipes down here, these pipes were too full. So I put in a, um, a pump up here which will take the water out whenever there's more than 150,000 in the tank over here. So at the moment it's at 100,000, so it's not that pump won't be running, but it will if that tank ever has too much water in it. And that allows us to dump it into here, and we've got all these flare stacks up here to, to just blow that water off into the sky. So that's about fine, that'll get rid of that nicely. Uh, this required quite a long cable, so you can see it sort of bounce, it goes up here across these um, pieces of belt, then it goes onto this pylon substation, up to this one, down here, down here, and it makes its way through the middle of, all the way through the processing area down here, until eventually... Um, uh, oh yeah, it then runs up this belt along here because you can't run a cable from a pylon here to the to the tank because that's far too far. You can only go about this sort of distance unless it's between unless it's pylon to pylon. So that's a little bit silly, but it worked in the end. So you know whatever. <laughs> and then down here as well, we've got this pump this pump plugged in as well, and this one's going to pump whenever there's less than 100,000 in there. So this is keeping us at 100,000 here. The, the other one's keeping us below 150,000. So that should mean that we can use water and we can produce water, and it will all be absolutely fine. So this system should work reasonably nicely now. I've also put in some prioritization of the Naquitite inputs. So we're now watching, the, all these belts along here are watching the amount of Naquitite in this warehouse. And if it's ever, and it only pumps it through when it's less than 8,000. So because we have a belt coming in here from uh, from melancholia and we prefer to use the naquitite from melancholia if we can because it's got much lower uh, transport costs because it's going through a magic teleport chest instead of going by spaceship which requires fuel and and so on and so on so if we can, we'll prefer to use this one. However, when the whole system down here is running flat out, we're pulling through two belts worth of uh, Naquitite. And so that means this one belt that's being brought in here can't keep up. 
Now, if I put in these underground belts here and hadn't run out of parts, then it would be able to keep up because we'd have two belts in, two belts out. That'd be absolutely fine as long as the supply from Melancholia can keep up. But I suspect at some point we're not going to be producing enough from there. And that's why we have the two asteroid fields and well, we're producing it from both of them. And so we, we have the system set up. So when we start to run a bit low in the warehouse here, we can then pull it out of the trains as well. And that'll use the supply that's coming in from Stardust. And this is working quite nicely. When the, so when the system is running, we did the... Um, in fact, let's let's demonstrate. If we, if we come over here, I can say I want I want to have these belts enabled all the time. We'll just pull that through. We'll make the Naquium flow as fast as we can. And so over here, you will see now the uh, the Naquitite should start to flow out of these um, out of these where out of these chests along here. Maybe there's quite a bit of buffer to pull through before that'll actually start working. Some time later, you can see now when we look at this warehouse. The amount of uh, Naquitite in there is, is gradually dropping. So we've got we've got one belt flowing in here at high speed from uh, from Melancholia, and we've got two belts pulling out. One going off this way to the first production system, and the other one going off this way. You can just about sort of tell this it's through that underground belt. <laughs> and so the amount in here is slowly ticking downward. It's got to about nine thousand, almost nine thousand now. So eventually we'll get down to that that low enough that these belts will all kick in. We'll pull a bit more through from the train system, and eventually we'll, we'll empty the train. We can send the train off to go and get some more. And so it's, so this is quite a nice balance. We're using up all of the resources from both areas but we're using the the cheaper one first and running through and, and just keeping keeping the system nicely balanced but using this as a top up as required because when there's a train here we can fill this warehouse up really really quickly because we've got uh, eight, yes, eight purple belts to fill it up. Um, however, then the train has to go off and refill. So those are those little gaps during which time this this belt carries on running and keeps it keeps it topped up as necessary. While we're here on Talas, I'll also mention that I put some speed modules in these centrifuges here because they couldn't keep up with the rate that the uh, iridium powder was coming out. So when you crush naquitite, it you you have to also put in some iridium plates as part of the, sort of the crushing because I guess it's it's really hard stuff, so it requires something to smash it up against and sometimes you get those plates back and they're in pretty good condition sometimes you get them back and they're not in such good condition they come out as a powdered form instead and so that powder then needs to be taken away where we can then ship it down to be made to be cooked back into the into the well into the ingots to then be cut up into the plates again and so that was being brought around here but the two machines initially when they didn't have the speed modules weren't fast enough however now they are because we put, I put some uh, they're, they're only tier two speed modules because that was the best I had on the planet but that means they're running 60% faster and that's been plenty to to get over this light the, uh, to get over the, the backlog that we had. I did try to put in a third one, but we just don't have the parts over here, so that one that isn't happening. Maybe some other time. Factorio is, of course, a game of logistics. A lot of what you're, do, you're doing in it is, is making sure you get all of the things you need from where they're made to where they're used as quickly and efficiently as possible in order to make sure that the factory keeps running. And so, in order to make sure things were getting to where they were needed, Mark put in another couple of ships doing the Fenestra run. And these are ones that come over here. They will pick up the matter out of these tanks, these very, very empty tanks, and take it off to Fenestra where we're just burning through it in order to generate power. This means we're now up to three Fenestra ships, and they're, and they're buzzing back and forth. It seems to be working quite nicely. We haven't got one sitting here waiting to fill up, so apparently we have just about enough over there in, in, in storage. However, as you'll notice, these are rather empty, and I think that means we're having some problems with the matter throughput. So it's brought up in a train um, in, the, in the normal way, it comes up the elevator, it's dropped off in a station here into these tanks, which, as you can see, are completely empty. At the other end, we have the traditional handover system, where a ground train will bring the uh, will bring the matter over, unload it into these tanks, and then we can load it into this train here, which has got a whole ooh six and a half thousand in it. So that's not going quite as well as we would like. It's also a kind of slow system because it's got the pumps connected to pipes, but never mind, that isn't the problem here. Over in the core processing area, well, this is where we are um, we're producing the matter. I guess we just don't have we're either not producing it quickly enough, or there's a shortage of there does seem to be a bit of a shortage of resources coming through actually. So. Okay, the rest of the factory has been ripping through enough iron and, and copper and everything else that we just seem to be, we don't seem to be producing it fast enough. That's interesting. And there's a there's a nice healthy supply flow of um, core fragments coming through here. So I don't think there's a problem. I think it's just that we're using it really, really quickly for uh, everything else that happens around the factory. And there's, there's a steady stream coming in from all the other planets as well. That's quite nice. Every so often, we should also be bringing in uh, loads of iron and stone from uh, with, with these trains. But they, uh, there is no train there. What are, you, what are you guys up to? Destination full iron ore from mines. Hmm. Okay, that's... Um, 
interesting. Something's gone a bit wrong with the trains here, I think, because we should have a steady supply of iron ore being brought from here, which is, that's, that's the iron ore that's coming over from Oliran, the iron planet that we found, and then being somehow, I don't know exactly where, but somehow unloaded over here so that it can be passed through when there's an actual shortage and be fed into these and, and be fed into the machines to make the matter. Now, I think it's probably this warehouse here, so there's probably a, there'll be a station um, here. Yeah, this one, I guess. This is presumably going to be the one that calls for them, um, and is currently, oh, it currently has a train limit of zero, so maybe that's why if I I can't untick but I could do that and that will that call trains yeah there we go okay so it is actually apparently working this is, uh, we just had a train and we just had a couple a train or two in a funny place anyway so yes that'll call over trains from the uh, from from the Oliran area they'll bring over the, the the quantity of iron ore in order to keep this running so it does seem that it actually is running fine we've got a machine here churning through making lots and lots of matter it's just we've been filling up so many buffers around the solar system or around the galaxy rather that we've run, that we've run out of it and we've got a train over here that's now basically full um, Oh uh, no, the front part of it is basically full, the back part is empty, or not not very full. So we just need the the, uh, the matter to flow through. We'll eventually manage to fill up all the wagons on this train and go over. And when the system so will carry on working. So, yeah, I think the system is actually working here. There, there aren't any serious problems. It's just that um, our rate of production of matter is insufficient for filling up two extra ships. I suspect our rate of consumption of matter is probably absolutely fine. As we can see on the graphometron over the last 10 hours, actually maybe it's not so fine. We've been producing it at an average of 3.8 thousand per minute, but we've been using it at an average of 4.2 thousand per minute, and that's a bigger number. Uh, you can see the bursts whenever we uh, whenever we start turning things on over in Fenestra. So yeah, we, we, we it's a little bit problematic there. We've um, we've used more than a million more matter in the last 10 hours than we've generated. So that's something we're going to have to keep a bit of an eye on. Now in all time, we've got almost two million matter sort of in the system at the moment, which we haven't burned through. So we're not too bad. We, we've got quite a lot of it available for, for use, uh, filling up buffers and things. However, in the, the medium term, we are using it up a lot faster than we're producing it. And the slightly shorter term, um, Actually, over the last hour, we've been producing it a lot faster than we've been using it, but that's because the uh, the Stargate hasn't been on because I've been making videos and talking about other completely unrelated things. Hmm. So this is a, a minor concern, but I think as long as, but with that two million we have in storage, and as long as we're sort of vaguely careful, I think we're probably going to be okay. Uh, this may be famous last words, however. <laughs> Over on Big Rid, Mark has fixed the, uh, the relatively trivial problem I spotted in the last uh, video, where this warehouse was completely full of sulphur and that jammed the entire system up. So now he's got a, uh, a couple of belts up here where he's trying to, he's putting as much sulphur out into this warehouse as he reasonably can. He's completely filled it, and then he's watching to see if there's an ever a shortage of sulphur in here, this will then run. So if there's less than a thousand sulphur in this bottom warehouse, then it'll be pulled back out of this one and it can then head off down the, down the belts over here to actually be used up wherever it's necessary. And despite putting in an extra warehouse up here, there's still 13,000 that's half a warehouse more over here so we have two and a half warehouses full of sulfur that's a bit ridiculous I hope the numbers have been tweaked so we're not shipping quite so much out here um, but at least we're not going to run out for a while I guess Looking at the system down here, it looks like we have enough of all of the Vita everythings, and that'll be because research isn't running at the moment. But you can see on all these um, all these belts over here, we've got everything ready and could flow through if it was needed, but they're all stopped because we filled all the buffers up to the, uh, the the level we want to have them filled up to. We're still producing a load of trash though, so clearly the system is still running and filling up the uh, the buffers on the belts, should we say, or in any other storage containers anywhere else around the factory. Uh, ones like this one, perhaps. So we're still we are still churning through quite a lot of stuff over here and passing it through but eventually we'll uh, if, if we don't start using the Vita, the Vita stuff then they, these these will eventually stop running because we'll have enough we won't need more Vita Melange to make all of the all the products so things will calm down a little bit but for now it's nice to see things running really really well. Mark has also massively expanded the available Immersium buffer or Immersite and Immersium so as you can see we've got got lots of crystals through here now there's about four and a bit thousand in each of these each of these and then another 14,000 in the uh, in the warehouse up here it does feel like we're a bit short of plate so maybe we'd have to have to look at the uh, the numbers that are coming through and make sure we have plenty of plate coming through. But this has given us a lot more storage space available over here, which means we're less likely to get any sort of jams when we bring if we bring over a, an entire spaceship full of crystal or an entire spaceship full of plate, and the system just goes, I don't know what to do with all of this, and it just ends up sticking being stuck in the warehouses down here. So this should give us plenty of space over there. And over on Taras itself, well, we can see that actually the crystals crystals 
seem to be flowing quite readily. And um, there's a good load of those coming through here. And we've got quite a lot of plate coming through as well. So we are trying to trying to build up the stockpiles, trying to make sure we've got enough over in, in Norvis that the, the system will carry on working merrily. Um, at the moment, we seem to be mostly unloading rare metals, but that's how it goes. We, once we've emptied the, uh, the train out of the rare metals, we can put all the other stuff into them. Uh, that's fine. This is, this is just how, 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 the, uh, how the mixed trains work. So I'm, I'm happy with all of that. Um, yeah, this all looks pretty good. I mean, we're, we're making a steady stream of crystals and of plates. I like seeing the crystals flowing through at a higher speed because I know we use a lot more of them than we do the plates. Um, but also, we have a lot more crystals in store than we have plates at the moment. So, uh, things seem to be basically okay, I think. We're, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of okay with the rate these are all running through at. I noticed during the last stream, the, uh, the over on Agnea, the, um, the planet where we're getting all of our vulcanite from, the, uh, the belt that brings the sulphur through all the way along to here was was struggling. Now, at the moment, it's completely full because the system is turned off because we have enough vulcanite. So there's not no actual prob specific problem there. However, uh, when the whole, when it's all running flat out, we get a bit of a problem that, um, yes, we have a nice purple belt coming all the way along through here, but it's fed in along a blue belt, and it's being produced relatively slowly over here by, by what, all of these machines. Now, these machines, are, they're turning oil, the crude oil that comes in from the, uh, from the mines into sulphur, great, and they are more than capable of filling the blue belt. However, the blue belt is not capable of keeping everything down, downstream running at full speed. So I think at some point, if, if, if this seems to be a problem, I might have to come back over here and do a bit more upgrading of, um, of blue belts to purple belts, specifically this one that runs through here and along all the way along here. We also have an additional feed of sulphur coming in, and this is brought over by the spaceship whenever there's an excess that's been brought back from Taras from the uh, from the Imosite product production, which, as you'll probably remember, produces huge amounts of sulphur as a byproduct. So that we we also need to get rid of that, and that goes up the up the belt along here, and will be fed in over here to be to be passed through and and, and used up in in preference. Uh, we don't seem to be doing very well at side balancing, but never mind, it's close enough. So this is all going in through the blue belt part of the uh, system though, so some upgrades along here are would probably help quite a bit, should we say. It's not a high priority because the system can keep up. As you can see, it's stopped completely at the moment. Well, it's stopped in the, from the, the ones that are running from the mines. The ones that run out of the, uh, the core processing are still running because that's uh, uh, cheaper and therefore we will run that one more often. Uh, but we have a decent supply of, uh, of um, Vulcanite over in Norvis, so we're, we're, we're doing pretty well there. We also had a bit of a problem out here because we're running out of water ice, and that turned out to be a problem over on Norvis, which Mark has been kind enough to fix. And I think it turned out that somehow we got a broken water pipe system somewhere around here. I don't know exactly what had happened, but somehow we managed to cut off one of the one of the pumps or one of the uh, one of the water one of the water pipes, so we weren't getting any water being brought in here. Therefore, there was nothing to freeze, and therefore, after quite a long time after the mistake was made, we eventually ran out of ice. So, as you can see, we've now got lots and lots of pumps going through lots and lots of pipes to feed lots and lots of machines. We have a lot of water coming in here now, a lot of it being turned into ice very, very quickly, and so we have a massive um, surplus of it, and we have a warehouse full, the train sit here, sat here happily, everything is going really well here. <laughs> so, yeah, it, 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 it is going well. Finally, over on Snowdrop, Tristan sorted out one of his mines that was struggling by going in and ripping up, by, but by deconstructing a load of mining drills on, I, I'm honestly not sure which mine it was, he's probably deconstructed it, so we're not going to be able to find it, uh, but he deconstructed a, a mining patch, was it down? No, I, I don't know, uh, which made, meant that the drills were then available to come over and put into another mining patch over here, which is why most of the ghosts over here are now no longer spooky and are now drilling usefully, and also why we have a nice steady stream of cryonite, and everything is running really well over here, and... Um, well, I say, yeah, it's running well enough. We have a flow coming in. The train isn't here begging for more. I think things are probably okay. And so, I think that brings us to the end of the video. We didn't do any, we didn't, I don't believe we got any researches completed in the last stream. So, um, no, no big announcements there. Um, we're just working on factory spaceships at the moment. So we can make a bigger or bigger or bigger or bigger or bigger victory shipper at the end. <laughs> something that's, I don't know, it's got a hotel on the back of it or something like that. So we will be back tomorrow uh, evening for another stream where we should be uh, having another go at the uh, at the Stargate and also carrying on with fixing bits and pieces here and there around the factory, just trying to keep things running smoothly and nicely. Um, as it, It's quite close to the end now. It just depends on how well we've managed to maths over the last week or so uh, it, and, and how nice the Stargate wants to be to us. I will then be back on Wednesday where I'm in a sort of similar position in Satisfactory. It's a, a little bit less um, brain drainy, a little bit less mathematical uh, in that one where I'm just trying to produce the bits and pieces that are required by the space elevator in order to finish off doing the sort of the, the final 
objective, I think is probably the best way to put it. And so I'm going to be going around trying to increase the amount of everything that's being produced. I will then, of course, be back at the weekend with some more of these sort of videos where I'll be uh, t t carrying on talking about what we've been getting up to with the Stargate and with everything else. And maybe, maybe I'll be able to announce that we've finished the game. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. Thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on everything. And I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.